Yo guys, what is up? First of all, I have an important announcement to make. I'm getting married. To the game, homie! We back uploading consistently every week, cuz! And there ain't nothing you can do to separate us. I love the game. Pause. But anyway, let's move on from my personal relationships to your personal statement. Huh? Huh? In this video, I'll cover how to write your personal statement, what to include in order to impress the medical schools, and how to actually structure your personal statement. First of all, let's cover some quick fire important facts that you must know. The deadline for the medicine and dentistry personal statement is 15th of October, so your mentors and teachers will probably get you to start drafting or writing it near the start of September. Now, this deadline is much earlier than other courses, but please do not complain because A, just Shush. Shush. And B, it's better that you get it done earlier because, you know, you need to focus on all the other important stuff like, I don't know, your A-levels, your interviews, your UCAT or your BMAT. So there's a lot of other important stuff to focus on. It's gonna get crazy, trust me. The character limit is 4,000 for your personal statement, which is not a lot actually, and you'll find out when you first start drafting. UCAS is a website you're going to be sending your personal statement through and also you're going to be applying to universities through that website. So for more information as well, please do make sure that you visit that website. Now this part is really important. Your personal statement is basically a piece of writing to show off your understanding of a doctor's role and the skills and attributes obtained by a good doctor. How you yourself have managed to develop these attributes and therefore how does that make you an ideal medical student and doctor. And then a bit about how you've shown a commitment to this lifelong journey and a bit about yourself. So a big part of your personal statement is talking about the skills and attributes of a good doctor. So I'm just gonna list like a bunch of GMC competencies of a good doctor on the screen, a bunch of skills. And these are some of the things that you can talk about in your personal statement. So what exact activities or merits can you achieve to strengthen your personal statement? You always hear questions like, you know, should I do Duke of Edinburgh? Should I do this? Should I do that? Will it be good for my personal statement? Well, let's go through some. Duke of Edinburgh, NCS, any sort of award like that, that is good because then you can talk about the teamwork skills or organization skills you develop there. That would be good in your personal statement. Any sort of employment, any job you've worked at, even if it's sort of like a waiter or waitress, that would be really good as well because you can talk about organization again and also you're dealing with people there as well. So that's very much relevant to medicine because you, you can talk about dealing with angry customers or building your communication skills. Work experience, okay, at a hospital and at a GP ideally. So you get that taste of the differences between primary care at GP and secondary care in a hospital as well. And also try to look for an opportunity to do some research as well if you can. So for example, at my GP work experience, I was able to do an audit, which again is just a, like a little thing that might set you apart from other applicants or that might impress that person who's reading your personal statement. Volunteering at a care home or other people have done volunteering at a special needs education school thing. First aid training on ambulance, that'll be good as well to talk about. Your hobbies, your interests, any sort of sports you've done as well. Higher education taster courses or summer courses, that again you can talk about sort of your commitment to learning and your commitment to medicine as well. And personal experiences as well, so often people in their personal statement mention some sort of hospital incident or um, how unfortunately they lost a family member, a close one, and that affected them. So be prepared to write about them and if you haven't already and if you've got time, get some of those things under your belt. But Similar to interviews, which by the way, your boy has made videos on interviews as well, which you should check out after finishing this video. I promise it's as banging as this one, but basically similar to interviews, it's about what you've learned from these experiences as opposed to just doing them. So you went on Duke of Edinburgh, so what? So you went to a one week work experience course at a hospital, so what? So. During my hospital placement, I observed a junior doctor assessing a patient with dementia. I was touched by the empathy shown and how effectively she communicated. Whilst holding the patient's hand, she took the time to clearly explain the condition and the next steps in the management. This emphasized the importance of listening, empathizing and effectively communicating with patients. I was able to develop these skills during my time at the local hospice funded by the St. Oswald's charity. The patients here were undergoing palliative care and although there was a limit to their medical treatment, I was still able to prompt some smiles through my interactions with them, which was a humbling experience. See, that right there, yeah? That, that right there. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's a proper ding dang do. It's so good. It's just so <laughs> flavoursome. In only about 700 characters and spaces, I've adequately explored what I saw and what I learned from my work experience at the hospital. But not only that, I've then linked it back to me. This is a personal statement about me. 
So I wrote about how I developed these skills that were displayed by the doctor through my volunteering, or it can be anything that you want. So let's get this ingrained in our heads. It's not about just what you've done. It's about how you can reflect and what you've actually learned from your experiences and how you've developed the relevant skills. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I've not really done anything where I've developed my teamwork skills, right? D do me a favor, yeah? Do me a favor. Shush. Very. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was the last one, sorry. I'm telling you, you have done something, man. Something where you can spin it off, where you've said, you know, you've developed teamwork skills through representing your school in, in a football team where you participate in tournaments. It involved you listening and giving instructions to, the, to your fellow teammates and also you made sure to contribute to the team's effort. Yo, you might have been some next level stinky left back yet. We already played a few games for your score, but it's the way you write it. Now hold up, hold up, okay? I'm not saying to lie on your personal statement, neither am I condoning lying on your personal statement. You shouldn't do that. But basically on your personal statement, you have to sell yourself to these medical schools. So don't shy away from gassing yourself up. Don't shy away from making yourself sound sick. You guys are kings, you guys are queens. So describe yourself like that. As well as writing about the skills and attributes displayed by doctors, another thing you can talk about is something you learned about the way medicine is practiced or something that just really fascinated or shocked you during your work experience. For example, in my personal statement, I touched on the fact that we learned about the ethics of DNAR, so do not attempt to resuscitate. I wrote about how my understanding of the role of a doctor changed from someone who tries to prolong the life of a patient as much as possible to someone who just tries to improve the quality of life of a patient as much as possible. And you could talk about something else, you know, perhaps there's a surgery or any sort of interesting topic that you saw or, or was mentioned or discussed on your work experience. And that's something that might set you apart from sort of the, the standard personal statement of just talking about, you know, teamwork and some of the skills that a doctor displayed. Although those things are important, this can be the thing that will set your personal statement apart from other students. A little problem here, we've talked a lot about work experience, but what if, for whatever reason, yeah, <coughs> pandemic. <coughs> what if for whatever reason you couldn't get work experience? Well, just reading this off from the whole York Medical School website, basically they recommend you do online virtual work experience workshops. And that's what a lot of the medical student prospects have been doing. And you would just do the same thing. You would just, you know, reflect on what you saw on, or on what you read and then how you developed that same skill. So we've covered what to write about in your personal statement and this important concept that we must implement when writing the statement. Now let's talk about structure. Yo, my G's, like this is a complete good idea. I'm, I'm bloody sweating just filming this video. So please make sure as you guys have been doing in every video, please like the video, share, make sure you subscribe, comment down below. Cause guys, I put, I put blood, sweat and tears into this video, minus the, the blood and sweat. Just smash like in it. Structure. So. 4,000 characters. Now, the, the, the structure is really up to you, but I'll give you a basic sort of overview of how I would structure your personal statement. So let's say about like five paragraphs, and let's say the first paragraph is just a short introduction to your motivation to become a doctor, why you want to study medicine and become a doctor. In fact, many people, including me, use their first paragraph in their personal statement to the answer to why medicine in their interviews. Often people try to include something eye-catching as well in this first paragraph, something like a personal experience or perhaps a quote as well. In my case, I wrote about a hospital visit, but I just left it at that in terms of the detail. I just reflected on that hospital visit and, and what sort of skills the doctor showed, like how they instilled a lot of confidence in me through their diligence and their scientific knowledge and their effective communication skills. I try to just be as concise as possible because remember, there's only 4,000 characters. So you don't need to go into sort of the, the, the backstory and the, the, the big details of your personal experience if you're gonna include one, unless you think it's gonna strengthen your personal statement. Next paragraph, you can talk about your work experience and sort of what you saw, what you learned, and then link that in with sort of how you developed that s same skill that was shown and displayed by the doctor through your personal sort of activities or something you've done. You can do a separate paragraph on volunteering as well at a care home or anywhere that you volunteered. 
Then another paragraph on stuff like Duke and Vanderbilt will challenge any of these sort of like extracurricular activities, your sporting achievements and just sort of sports in general and hobbies as well. Make sure to include personal stuff like that as well to give a bit of personality. It's, it's called a personal statement after all. So then before your conclusion, you can talk about any sort of wider reading you've done, maybe on the GMC, any sort of books you've read as well and make sure to do sort of a short reflection like what exactly you've learned and how that's gonna prepare you as well for becoming a medical student and a doctor. And then in your conclusion, you can basically summarize how and why the skills you've written about above are important to being a medical student and to being a doctor as well. How, how your experiences and what you've learned are gonna prepare you for becoming a doctor and why you would become basically the ideal medical student or doctor. And be enthusiastic as well. I wrote something like, you know, I'll truly cherish studying medicine or, or something like that. You know, medical schools are looking for someone who actually wants to study medicine, not for someone who's just being told to study medicine or who is being you know, pushed to do it by their parents. So actually show enthusiasm and passion throughout your personal statement, but also here in the conclusion. And last tips, yeah, don't, don't copy anyone, but you can take inspiration just just don't plagiarize what i mean by that you can, you can read other people's personal statements but i wouldn't don't copy anything word for word or anything silly like that gas yourself up yeah make yourself sound sick like you guys really are you, you you kings and queens but don't lie okay don't don't say you've read a book and you've never even opened a page of it <laughs> you naughty naughty because boy you're in trouble if it's an interview where they have your personal statement in front of you they're gonna ask you about that book and draft 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 just keep making drafts and improvements and show it to your english teacher as well because best believe yeah if after all these golden tips that i've handed out and all, the, all this help that you received from everyone from your teachers and, and, and all the other youtubers best believe if you make grammar mistakes throughout your personal statement or any sort of spelling mistakes or your sentences sound like garbage that is the biggest L don't worry not everyone is brilliant at English I know I'm certainly not great at English but but make sure you're, you're showing it to your mentor and your English teacher as well and make sure it just sounds good like use like good words good vocabulary and just just good English in it like don't don't make it sound like you just freestyled it, like Eminem style. So you want to be able to read it and be like, wow, what, what, a, what a masterpiece. And you guys will be fine, yeah. That, that is, I think, like a basic, complete guide to writing a personal statement. You're welcome. If you guys like the video, please drop a like, share, comment, subscribe. If you guys have any questions as well, please do not hesitate to comment them down below. Make sure to follow my Instagram as well to keep up with my personal life and you can ask me any questions there as well. And yeah, uploading every week, baby, every Tuesday, Taha Tuesday. So I'll see you next week on Taha Tuesday. Peace.